Squat, scorn. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the Antoine Dupont of website builders. When talking about sport, we often get caught up in the concept of the best. It's all too easy. When the whole idea of athletics is to win, to be number one, it's natural to be joined in the conversations, be they pitch side or pint side, about which team should be considered the greatest, which player has the highest ceiling, about Nick Tompkins in general. And yeah, at the heart of maybe the best team in the world, one of the two, sits a guy who defies this discussion. A guy who complicates every simple ranking competition. For Jameson Gibson Park isn't the best scrum half in the world. He's something much greater than that. This weekend just gone, an incredible hat-trick by the beard-built metronome took the boys in, let's say Navy, into the European quarterfinals one step close to ending the agonising hunt for that fifth star in the shirt that's kept D4 coke dealers in work for six straight years. All off the back of a second success of Six Nations where he was critical and two years as the key man in the side atop the men's world rankings. As well as several seasons bossing things for the most consistent club side in Europe. All whilst flying as close to under the radar as one can in the scrum half position. It all begs one question. Just how critical is Jameson Gibson Park to Leinster and Ireland? Just what makes him so good? And where does he currently sit because we can't help ourselves amongst the current greats? I'm not sure there's any individual player at the moment more important to their national team's game plan than Jameson Gibson Park for Ireland. Antoine Dupont might be the best scrum half of the last 40 odd years. Faf de Klerk might be the king of shit out sneakery scrum half play, but there's no nine who could maximise Ireland and indeed Leinster's game plans, structures and systems quite like JGP does every single week. James Gibson Park first broke through in 2012 when he stumbled right out of school in his Taranaki starting 15 in the MPC. Quickly then signing for the Blues and Super Rugby during their much face-palmed Benji Marshall season where they promptly decided he didn't have enough names, leading to um, this. Jameson Gibson Park, aka JGP, aka Hot Dog, aka Half a Man, <laughs> aka Skinny, aka Fresh Cuts. As he went on to provide solid third choice cover for Legend of the All Blacks and the Richmond brands of Pizza Hut, Piri Weepu, and the ever underrated Bryn Hall. A handful of starts the following season earmarked him as one to watch before his speed of four and rapid breakaway delivery saw the Hurricanes, New Zealand's go to side for million mile an hour play, come a knocking. Gibson Park would go on to play 16 of 20 games for the Canes the following season, including the grand final. Every single one of them off the bench. Not a single start all year. And yet, in many ways, that just made his job in those days even more straightforward. Up the pace. Involvements like this were bread and butter, a quick tap support line, then a quick whipped away ball from the breakdown to put Nati Lamarpe over for the try. Gibson Park never scored a try for the Canes, yet so regularly exhibited the exact qualities that have become his point of difference for Ireland. Indeed, the way he follows the play and finds a hole in the defence after giving that pass, using the time not having the ball gives you to scan the defence and find the hole in that example, or here, anticipating the break by Wales as well as Hallow, and running a brilliant support line towards the final defender, aware Scotland's Blade Thompson is on hand to take his pass and finish the try, all because he knew exactly where every defender on the field was, is exactly what took him to that superb hat-trick last weekend against Leicester Tigers. Gibson Park is far from the only scrum half who runs lines like this, getting ahead of the play, anticipating the break, meaning when Osborne's C is through, he's right on his shoulder to take the pass. Some commentators might even say that um, every good scrum half that's ever, ever played the game does it. Yet in modern test rugby, maybe only the hamster-shaped creature in the corner does it better. The best way to highlight what JGP gets so right about his support lines is not summed up by any individual try he scored this year or any year in his career, but rather by putting them all next to each other, something very convenient to do when it's a hat-trick against the same opposition. Running a good support line is less an art and more a science. It's a simple equation. You want to find the spot on the field where you are closest to your teammate, the ball carrier, but furthest away from defender, from any defender. On his opening try, Gibson Park here finds that spot some 10 metres away from Joe McCarthy, the player making the break. Knowing the rampaging lock is on an outside arc, headed towards the corner here, Gibson Park gets ahead of the line and straightens up, heading straight towards the line, running square in order to counter the defenders all drifting, working so hard to get to McCarthy you'd think they were Harry S. Truman. By being the only guy running in a straight line, he's able to take the ball and run it in square. Yet where he goes for 10 metres away on the first one, on his second try, JGP packs in tight. There's one yard between him and Sheehan here because JGP is 
totally aware of the Leicester defenders. The common choice they've usually aligned would be to stand wider so Pollard can't drift onto him, but doing so would give Wells and Liebenberg here a better chance of catching him so he gets as far away from them as possible, and that spot away from them happens to be as close to Sheehan as possible, trusting his hooker to time the pass perfectly. Where Antoine seems to teleport into the perfect position and jog it in, Gibson Park is always looking, scanning, watching her. Sixth sense and spatial awareness keeping him on top, in position to run it in, always in enough space to finish it off at all times, able to pick lines like this on the fly, adjusting to saw through and score before the offload is an option. And incidentally, it's this kind of instinct that gave him a route out of his bench Kiwi days, as he used his um, square spatial awareness and headed to Squarespace. Looking for new club offers, yet the terrible SEO of his name left potential employers instead googling him and looking at a dog part in South Africa, JGP built his own custom website to promote his career listing key skills, abilities what he's best at, including video clips, write-ups, testimonials, and even having a storefront where you could go in and buy him if you were a club. And all of it, he was able to track detailed analytics to make sure people were heading to the right places and they were searching the right terms, optimizing his website accordingly. And he did it with no special knowledge required. The entire process was so straightforward and easy to build, taking just hours to put together, yet with endless options to tweak for weeks and weeks. And if you want to do the same and build your own website right this minute, right this very second, please head to the link in the description use the offer code Squidge Rugby to save yourself some money on that web site. Then Hurricanes coach Chris Boyd told him starts would come the following season, and yet, after not getting a single look in all year, JGP looked elsewhere. He'd built a reputation quickly as a quickie, a brilliant scrum off who could play away incredibly fast, and it just so happened there was another club fond of pace first rugby eyeing up a scrum off who could inject some half man zip into the game, all the way over on the other side of the world. And so, after just one season at the Hurricanes, JGP signed for Leinster. And the rest is kind of history, qualifying for Ireland three years down the road and going on to become a hero. Gibson Park played 29 of the province's 31 games in that first season, scoring on the first of his nine starts in the nine jersey that year. And yet, to watch that first season back now just highlights how much Gibson Park has not just improved, but critically changed during his time in Ireland, becoming perhaps the best possible version of the player he always could have been. When he arrived in Ireland, in his own words, Gibson Park couldn't kick snow off a rope. His old coach at Taranaki, Colin Cooper, saying that he just wasn't interested in it. He said he played the game to run, not to kick. And yet, Leinster kick less off nine than almost any other non-basket case team in Europe, meaning they could take a chance on him and wait for him to improve as he went on. And it is an area of his game that has come on enormously. Now, for Leinster, it's less of a priority, but for Ireland, he was stepping into the shoes of one-time tribute video receiver and of himself, have a Connor Murray, maybe the goat of contestable box kicks, and he has really grown into his role since, becoming as good as anyone else out there. But his true strengths and the true improvements in his game since arriving at Leinster lie elsewhere. The USP of JGP, the reason he stands out, the reason he transformed Ireland with ball in hand from an efficient team to the best attack in the world, is what he can do from the base of a ruck, because it is quite unlike anyone else out there. The eye-catching part of Ireland's game plan of that best attack in the world is this, the intricate passes, the little pops, the guys running around, constantly doing rugby. But, like with so many flashy attacks, this all only works if you are crossing the game line first, if you've had a few first up carries that get you going forward. And whilst there are maybe other scrum halves who can create more breaks or start more action themselves, if you want to generate fast front football off nine, there is no scrum half in the world you want more than Jameson Gibson Park. His former coach at Leinster, Stuart Lancaster, once described Gibson Park as the quietest nine he ever worked with, the scrum off least interested in yapping at referees and oppositions, or ordering his own pack around. And whilst it's not recommended for any scrum off, if you're a young scrum off watching this, do not take this as advice, I think that description beautifully demonstrates his point of difference as an international rugby player. Instead of talking, setting, barking, ordering, Gibson Park just plays. The second the other nine spend barking is instead spent scanning, looking for holes or forwards still retreating into position. Watch Gibson Park approach a ruck and his eyes are almost always on the defensive line, rather than his own players or the availability of the ball or the referee. That same trust in Sheehan to give that pass is evident in all of his game, confident his teammates will find space, allowing him to put them into it. There's nobody out there for me better at selecting which player to pass to off the base than Gibson Park. He has an uncanny ability to select the runner most likely to cross the game line 10 times out of 10, often skipping the first spot entirely 
they're well marked up, hitting centres on lines or entire second groups of forwards. He's unbelievable at finding the runner in the most space. However, that would be a fat lot of good if he couldn't get the ball to them. And yet, so much of this is possible and enhanced thanks to the sheer insane speed JGP can make a little rubber egg go whoosh. The old saying, the ball is faster than the man, isn't always true in these days of rush defences and adjusting defenders, but a pill flicked by this guy is almost definitely winning that race, once again, 10 times out of 10. Hell, NASA could probably save themselves some money by letting his wrists launch their rockets into space, yet it's one thing having a ludicrously quick pass, and it's another not being Ali Davis. This joke is harsh on Ali Davis, he's superb, he's a really underrated player. But JGP's pass has, in a way perhaps, you know, Ali Davis wasn't used properly by coaches, been weaponized beautifully by Ireland before Saracens, Ali Davis has been very good at Saracens. He was good for the Ospreys as well, just in a badly coached team. Because his pass is so bloody quick, JGP can get the ball to this player here in about the same time he get it to this player here. We're looking at 0 0.001 of a second's difference. And as a defender, that isn't a difference. And it leaves every option open. There's no time to adjust. Here, any of these guys could receive the ball inside two beats of the heart. To use this example against England, the ball gets so close to James Ryan that England don't even really consider that it might go to someone else until it's literally Mac Hansen's hands. It's a pass so fast Brian Habana might try to race it, except it's only England that's slow on the turn. Their eyes haven't adjusted, isolating Dan Cole, meaning the ball is now in a race against the slowest man on the field. The ball obviously wins, because of course it does, allowing Sheehan to gallop down the wing. Poor old Coley, only playing catch-up. Ireland's ball is once again lightning fast. Gibson Park there immediately, into his hands before England can organise their defence. So, Cole folds around the ruck, trying to make himself useful, except JGP goes the other way. Curry calls Cole to come back blind, but he can't get there in time. The ball is out running for a third time in a row. JGP gets the ball in and out, forcing Curry to commit to Hansen, allowing Conan to put Sheen over in the corner. This try is almost entirely down to the quality of Gibson Park's pass, leaving England floundering, unsure who's getting the ball, unsure where it's going, and unable to make the tackles as a result. Because there's another aspect to his game. When a scrum half scores a hat-trick, as the only GP with fast and reliable service did this weekend, you almost always can assume at least one of them will be a short-range sniper, dart over from close range, or a little dummy thrown and they go through from 10 metres out. And yet, perhaps the biggest development in Gibson Park's game during his time with Leinster, perhaps the biggest change compared to his time in Super Rugby, where the only try he scored was from a dummy and a dart, or his first season in Dublin, where once again, that opening try was from a dummy and a dart, and has been the way that Lancaster and Cullen have made him double down on his his natural game on playing the way he normally plays. Jameson Gibson Park of 2024 almost never snipes. In fact, you could argue two of his three tries on Saturday come from resisting this urge. On the first, it's on for Gibson Park to snipe himself here, half a man to hit half a hole and cross the gain line, but no. He resists the temptation and trusts the call, and sure enough, when the break comes, he's on hand and the try is scored. He hasn't taken himself off his feet, he hasn't overcommitted, he's there and able to run the line. Every team at every level naturally honeypots a little to the ruck. It's logical. The closer the ball is to a gap, the more likely a ball carrier is to go through it. And so, defences fill those holes in first, working tirelessly to fill those gaps and then leaving maybe the space wider out because that's the most difficult to get to gives you most time to readjust and cover it later. Because his varied perfect pass selection and speed of ball plays the same role of keeping defenders honest around the fringes as most nice wee little darts do, not only is Gibson Park able to remain on his feet allowing for the support lines like his third versus Tigers but it also gives his team a much better shot of finding that space out wide. The ball coming away quickly, fast, with those defenders still engaged on the fringes, still focused inwards and yet there's never any risk of the ball being slowed down or pace being taken out of the attack because he's having a little trim around and allowing the opposition 13 to come in and shut anything down. This here is insanely smart. Azerati here is slow to get back on side, but a few meters outside the nine channel, so instead of running at him, as many scrum miles might do, JGP absolutely launches this ball onto the outside of Azerati, forcing Costello here to wake up and jump into action, kind of panicked, knowing he now has to jam in. The ball comes so fast, so wide, Crowley has to physically arc to change his line to get onto Costello's outside to even catch the thing, meaning he's basically already beaten his opposite number when he takes the ball. Crowley gets onto Nash who improvises brilliantly and puts low over for a try. All of this just makes the rare occasions on which he does snipe more effective. France here have essentially switched off, forgetting that him sniping himself is an option, likely so aware that he plays wide 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 that they leave that gap around the ruck, putting the sneaky lad under the post for a try. Jameson Gibson Park is not the best scrum half in the world, but when your game plan is built on fastball, front foot carries and face shapes, there's not a single scrum half in the world who will better implement and maximise that system than JGP. Ireland might win more games if they could import Antoine, but there's no way their game plan could run as smoothly as it does for their current 
number nine. In fact, if they did bring an Anton, they'd likely have to change the entire thing, come up with a completely new game plan to make the most of him. Andy Farrell's system is built on bamboozlement, making defenders second guess who might take the ball. And when Jameson Gibson Park is on the field, Every single player that's on their feet is an option in the attack. His wide pass is beautiful, flawless. Anyone could receive the ball inside a second. Farrell was once asked, what is the most important attribute for an attack? And he answered, work rate. Gibson Park's speed allows Ireland to use that work rate and to unlock defensive with pattern and system better than any other scrum off in the world, no matter how talented or capable they may be. He might not be the answer to any of those pitch side or pint side chats about who the best nine in the world might be, but the next time you're having an argument over Ireland or South Africa, Leinster or La Rochelle, he might just be the reason for the answer or the hesitation you're about to give. You watched that and I want to thank you for doing so. Thank you for watching it. Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it, watching it to the end. Um, we've got another video coming tomorrow on the Women's Six Nations, likely tomorrow, maybe the day after, that will look in the first two rounds, go into all six teams in some detail. So that's coming. Hopefully, you know, you enjoy that. Please keep an eye out for that. There's also the podcast on the 2007 World Cup. We're going through the knockout stage at the minute. We're on to the semifinals. There's an episode on the first semifinals. The second one is coming up this week, most likely. So that's all happening. Um, I'll be at Kingsham on Friday night, so please say hello if you see me. And otherwise, I'll see you next time tomorrow for more rugby. Um, favourite food? <laughs> favourite food? Um, jelly top ice cream. Is that a food? Yeah, it's a food. Well, favourite meal then? Favourite meal? Um, um, beer feet. Sn oh, very cold. Sore feet.